Hi, I'm Erica Lemke from the University of Missouri, and welcome to this stair tailored video on differentiating in whole group math instruction. In NCTM's document, Principles to Action, they talk about differentiation in math, uh, providing a rationale that an excellent mathematics program requires that all students have access to a high, to high quality mathematics curriculum, effective teaching and learning, high expectations, and the support and resources needed to maximize their learning potential. Teachers often have misconceptions about differentiation. Of course, we all agree we should meet each student where they are, but with a class of 25 students, how is that done? There isn't time to plan and deliver multiple lessons. The best we can do is teach to the middle, give the high achievers some extra worksheets, and try to work with the struggling students one-on-one -on -one while others are working independently. But differentiation can be embedded into the things you are already doing and the idea is to create an environment and instruction that allows all students to access the big ideas at different stages of mathematic development and to benefit and grow from the experiences they have. This can be done through small changes and intentionality in planning. Most math teachers utilize whole group instruction, so let's talk about a small change that can open up your instruction to all students. That, that change we're gonna talk about is open questions. Now I should mention that some of you have moved to more of a workshop model in math where you do whole group instruction and then you move to small groups uh, to do some guided practice. And if you're using that model, kudos to you. I know it's difficult to embed that, uh, but that's a really good practice. So think about uh, these questioning strategies that we're going to discuss next, either in that whole group math instruction or in those small groups. So Gersten and his colleagues in their study talk about uh, some questioning strategies. Um, they talk about the value of questioning and they actually suggest that verbalization may help to anchor skills and strategies both behaviorally and mathematically. So the research supports that really making those uh, connections through questioning uh, keeps kids engaged, which may prevent behaviors, and also may help them to sort of solidify uh, those mathematic skills. So as you think about the questions that you're gonna ask, these open questions, uh, think really intentionally about the questions you pose and why. So it's gonna take some time to prepare these uh, questions in advance, um, but be planful about that. I know that I always do better when I actually plan the questions I'm gonna ask rather than just sort of thinking those up on the fly. Uh, we want questions uh, that provide responses that tell you something important about what the students understand. Uh, and then also questions that allow students to engage with mathematical thinking and that allow all students to engage in thinking mathematically. So really being intentional about that. Okay, so here's an example of a particular uh, question that we might ask and also a non-example. So if I were to uh, provide a non-example, it might be that um, I ask students to solve for M in this particular equation. Uh, if we use the non-example, the question only has one correct answer. The student response will tell you only if they can get the right answer or not. This doesn't give you information about what they understand. The example question, uh, in contrast, the solution to an equation is m equals minus 15. The equation involves a fraction. What might the equation be? It's open enough to allow students to approach it using different strategies. It allows students uh, at different levels of mastery to benefit in engaging in math and gives you as the teacher more insight into the student's understanding of the concept. Classroom discussion around this work will be richer and all students will have something appropriate to contribute if you involve more intentional opening, open uh, questioning. In discussion, uh, 
we often ask students some questions as we engage in checking for understanding. Here's another, again, non-example, an example of some of those questions. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes checking for understanding and engaging students and questioning involves questions that are closed, like these non-examples. What is the next step? So the next data point would be, what is the solution? Again, there's only one correct answer, discouraging less confident students to participate and only giving you limited feedback. Try asking open questions that allow students to explain concepts and their mathematical thinking. Listen for opportunities to highlight student thinking to support your instruction. And I think really uh, don't be afraid to ask these kinds of questions to different levels of students. You might be surprised about uh, the, their, their depth of understanding. So I think be prepared to think about how you might vary questions uh, for different levels of your students. This has been a stair tailored video on differentiating instruction. Look for other stair tailored videos on our site on other topics related to algebraic readiness.